In this video, we look at how iodine influences blood environment and total body voltage, and why it matters for thyroid function, autonomic balance, and overall physiology. My name is Dr. Jeremy Steiner, and for over 20 years, I've helped acupuncturists improve clinical outcomes using modern electric medicine techniques. At the Electroacupuncture Institute, our mission is to equip practitioners with effective science-based tools to deliver real results. So stick around to the end, grab the free resource we've included for you, and if you find this valuable, please like, follow, and share the video. Here I showed you that slide where we used electricity to get the clumping red blood cells into non-clumping red blood cells. Well, there's also a similar study where clumping red blood cells and then they start taking iodine and that also has a beneficial effect for declumping and fixing the environment of the blood because remember 60% of thyroid function is total body voltage including the blood as one of our tissues. Very little iodine in U.S. farmed food. There used to be more. This is cool. It effectively treats food poisoning. So if you get home after eating dirty McDonald's, uh, take a bunch of iodine, like 50 milligrams. You'll feel better. This is cool too, UTI or bladder infection. So if you have a UTI or bladder infection, this works better if you've already been taking it and you're super saturated. Otherwise, the iodine may not end up in the bladder. Uh, your body will keep it for itself elsewhere. But if you are saturated or been taking it a while and then you get a UTI bladder infection, which you won't because you've had iodine. Um, but if you did, then you would take a couple massive doses, like 50 milligrams a few times a day. A lot of the iodine will end up in the bladder and just kill the infection. And I wrote here, adult needs 12 to 15 milligrams a day. That's starting. Robert O. Young takes 150 milligrams a day. I took 150 milligrams a day for a while, but it was super expensive. But it was like, the more you take, the better I feel. That's what it was similar to. So you felt a lot better. Oh yeah, felt a ton better. Now I try to do 50 milligrams a day, which is like a balance between my wallet and my health. But there's a lot of fear in the world, and a lot of people are against what I'm saying. A lot of our patients' primary care doctors are against what I'm saying, which is why 12.5 milligrams is a safe dose. The functional medicine doctors use it, 12.5 milligrams a day. And everybody should be taking 12.5 milligrams minimum a day for the rest of your life. And that's because there's so many toxins in our environment. Um, like Fukushima 2011, remember that Japanese power plant, radiation, spillage, everybody was scared for a while and then now you don't hear anything about it. Is it still radiating? Probably. I place money, it's still radiation polluting seaweed that I buy at the store or saw in the atmosphere, who knows? 12.5 milligrams, everybody. Everybody listening to me now, also try to get your patients 12.5 milligrams with cofactors. Remember, you don't want to cause um, Hashimoto's from taking just pure iodine without selenium. You only need a little bit of selenium. Cofactors are in multivitamins, so if they're on a multivitamin, you're okay to give them. You're generally okay, as long as your multivitamin is not GMO. It's pretty difficult in Kroger to find non-GMO stuff. Difficult, like maybe only 5%, 95% has some sort of GMO relationship. Um, I'm still searching for non-GMO Advil. Organic. Um, every person should take it to prevent infections and the C word don't know what that is, and for overall health and wellness. Here's that thing I was talking about, hypothyroidism or fluoride poisoning. Because even if a patient's taking iodine, but they're also drinking sink water, that iodine is being kicked off of this receptor here. 
So even if this tyrosine molecule is loaded up with iodine, and we call that thyroid hormone, and then you drink fluoride, it knocks off this iodine, and it takes its place, and this turns into fake thyroid hormone. If you'd like to better understand how iodine, total body voltage, and thyroid physiology work together electrically, we've included a free resource below that breaks this down for acupuncturists. Take a moment to download it, and if this training is helpful, please like, follow, and share it with a colleague who would benefit. And that has to do with the fact that both iodine and fluorine are halogens. Most blood tests do not show fake thyroid hormone. It's that reverse T3, reverse T4 to show that. Now, you can get a permanent damage from the thyroid. Think about scarring, which is one of our seven Ichi leaks. If you get scarring in the thyroid, scars displace normal cells from regenerating in that physical location. <clears throat> How can we get rid of that? High-dose digestive enzyme. Remember, I showed you that x-ray. Let's do a treatment and break things up a bit. Who wants a treatment? Come on out. Can we get a mic? Cool. Give it a second. Microphone coming. Thank you for being a good sport. Thank you. Uh, if we had a magic wand, could fix any one problem today, what would it be? Uh, pr emotionally, just dropped my daughter off for freshman year of college, so it was massive emotional upheaval. Okay. What's the overarching emotion? Like, I feel gutted. Gutted? So, like, empty? Or? Empty, sad. I feel, like, right here. Mm -hmm. Are you used to feeling that for other reasons in your life? No? Emptiness. Where did she touch? There. So we're starting to put a little bit of pieces together. Uh, any other problems? Yeah, I have had pain kind of right in here on the right side. Okay, she's showing a back muscle, which I recognize as stomach spleen channel. Right there. Um, Emptiness here. Mm -hmm. What else? Um, perimenopause kind of stuff. Okay. Not resting as well. Okay. Irritability. Irritability. What channel? CB. Okay. Uh, not resting well. What channel? PC. PC or triple energizer, yes. So we're back to the autonomic nervous system and fire channels. Do you have wisdom teeth? I had two, and I had them removed. I, had like, I don't remember what side, but I had one upper and one lower, and they were opposing okay. There's sides. another correlating factor. So now we have dental... As a leak, wisdom teeth extracted, 90% of wisdom teeth extractions fail, turn to silent infections called cavitations. Let me take it another step further. What usually happens is a patient in their 20s or 30s gets their wisdom tooth extracted, thus offsetting the autonomic nervous system, sending a sympathetic nonstop on signal to the adrenal glands, which you have to turn off. But this person's in their 20s or 30s, they're getting a lot of sympathetic input going to the adrenal glands, and maybe the adrenal glands are kicking ass and they feel great, a ton of energy. But then after a while, two years, or it depends on the patient, it turns into a lifelong process of adrenal insufficiency. But that on signal stays on because it originates from a fire channel issue from a wisdom tooth extraction. Adrenal is one of our seven Ichi leaks. We haven't gotten to it yet. I could just keep asking her questions, and you'd see a bunch of stuff lining up with fire channels, but I think we're good for the diagnosis. Do you take iodine? I bought it after one okay. of our classes, and I take it, but not consistently. I take it okay. like maybe two or three times a week. So remember step one, two, three. One is which channel, two is with Ichi leak, and three is Gucci. So you know, tomorrow we'll get into more Gucci, but we can start to think, okay, I may want to recommend this patient, get on, encourage them to get on the iodine. The thyroid and adrenals are best friends. You need properly functioning thyroid for proper function adrenal and vice versa because of the neurohormonal relationship. Both of them are stomach spleen channel issues. We good on diagnosis for her? I think so. 
All right. So what are we going to do for you? Let me get some fresh paper for you. So wisdom tooth extracted. I didn't even ask any other dental issues, root canals, no. um, mercury fillings. No. That's good. Impacted teeth. Now remember what her initial complaint was, face up. What was her initial complaint? Emotion. So let's do an emotional treatment along with the other stuff. So what's an emotional treatment? Do you remember? I, I went over briefly. So it's inserting chi into the deficient channel while the patient's experiencing the emotion or memory, which they don't have to tell you about, they just sit in it. So if a patient's angry and you're filling up the liver channel and the gallbladder channel because that's the master of emotions, they can just be angry and then encourage them to be angry. And then after 10 minutes, they'll be like, I'm trying, I'm just not angry anymore. Just keep trying. You wanna try and get all that anger out. This works on nightmares too, um, where an emotion, a stuck magnetic field is stuck in the system causing nightmares. But when the patient wakes up, they have that same emotion that they're used to dealing with during the day because it's a stuck magnetic field. Thanks for watching. I hope this gave you a clearer understanding of how iodine, total body voltage, and thyroid physiology intersect clinically. Be sure to download the free resource below and we'll see you in the next training.